one of our tigers, his name is Aragon. He's 14. He came up from a facility in Colorado where they housed about 110 cats in an area that was big enough for about 20 cats. So what they would do is they would just take a big chunk of meat every day, just toss it in, and whoever ate that day ate, and whoever didn't, did not eat. Definitely like very bad living conditions, overcrowded. I'm just not getting that good care that they deserve. We are at Black Pine Animal Sanctuary in Albion, Indiana, and I am uh, one of four lead keepers here. We are a true animal sanctuary, which means we do not buy, sell, trade, or breed animals. A lot of these animals have been privately owned before, which means that they were just a pet. So a lot of these animals, unfortunately, have been mistreated. We take animals from bad situations, bad previous facilities, kind of like backyard zoos or zoos that aren't accredited. These animals, they would not do well in the wild. They don't have those instincts. So unfortunately we don't, you know, we aren't able to rehabilitate and release. So this is kind of like a little retirement community for our animals and we just take care of them for the rest of their lives. We are the only multi-species sanctuary in the Midwest. We have over 90 animals. We have a lot of tigers, we have a lion, a cougar, some small cats like bobcats and servals. Uh, we also have a lot of primates, uh, reptiles, birds, bears, foxes, and wolves. Joe is uh, one of our primates. He's a long-tailed macaque. He was privately owned. So they used to, you know, walk him around with a belt around his waist. And then he started to get more aggressive and they realized that they were too afraid to handle him. They didn't want to handle him anymore. So they ended up um, putting him in a closet. He really only had like one enrichment item. It was a little swing for him, not a lot of you know, branches to climb on and things like that. And they also would just put scraps of food on a paper plate and slide it underneath the door. The floor is just covered with paper plates and urine and feces. You know, they were too afraid to go in there and actually clean. So when we got him, he was completely skin and bones. He was very, very malnourished. We didn't actually think he was gonna make it under anesthesia. We are not a zoo, and so we don't want to create more of an issue of this exotic ownership in the United States. You don't ever get to handle them here, but they do come up to the caging a lot of times, so you'll get that one-on-one -on -one experience and that kind of closest experience without actually having to handle the animals, which is, you know, one of our missions is we don't ever want to, you know, use these animals for entertainment purposes. Some facilities offer like pay to plays and cub headings and things like that, which does sound awesome. You know, as a kid, I really was like, oh my gosh, my dream is to hold a tiger. I love tigers, but it's not the ethical thing. The animals do go through a lot. They're out there for hours and hours. A lot of times they get really stressed. Um, they, they're wild animals. They don't want to be handled. They deserve to be just using their natural behaviors. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those facilities are only in it for the, for the profit. So this is our lioness, Africa. She's eight years old. Um, she was actually part of a cub a petting program. So people sitting around a circle pass her around. Um, and apparently a small child actually fell on her back and the people that own the facility thought that the kid had broken her back. Um, but instead of getting the vet care that she deserved, they just threw her in this concrete cage for three years of her life. Um, it was about the size of a large dog kennel. So she just had enough room to turn around, but that was it. But when we got her, she was very, very malnourished. I mean, you could count every single vertebrae on her back. I mean, this is her first enclosure that actually has, like she stepped on grass for the first time. Luckily, when she was healthy enough, we did get her the vet care. Now she's just an amazing, you know, healthy lion that she is today. So education is a big part of what we do. We want to make sure people are aware of the issues that are going around in the United States. There's not a lot of laws that prevent people from owning exotic pets. So that is one thing we are trying to push for. We have a couple family events throughout the summer and we have different overnight events as well. So we welcome you know, all ages. There are a lot of adults that end up learning a lot more than they think they would. We are a nonprofit organization. We are solely run on donations. So all that support just you know, helps care for these animals. The bonds that you create as a keeper with the animals is really, really special. You're so pretty. Just knowing that you're giving them a better life is just an amazing feeling. It drives me to you know, wake up every day, come here and take care of all these animals and just give them the best life that we possibly can.